What is up guys, DiverseGFX here, and today I have a tutorial for you to create something like this. My background, if you didn't get the image. Um, I haven't done a tutorial in a while, and I was just sitting down eating some mac and cheese and some Chex Mix, and I was like, what the hell? You know, I don't have baseball, so I might as well do something interesting, because baseball is not interesting. So, enough of that. Open Cinema 4D, and um, here we go. So, first things first, you're going to want to import any shapes you want. The ones that look best, I think, are capsules and spheres, just because you want to turn up the segments on both of them. People like to like a pick an actual number, like an 80. Uh, it doesn't really matter, honestly. And then turn up the height segments and the cap segments on the capsule. Now you're going to go to the deformers and go to a bend deformer. Then you are going to highlight them all, press Alt G. Um, I'm sorry if you have a Mac, I really don't know what it is on a Mac, but you'll probably figure it out. And then you can now change the strength of the bend to get a nice effect like you can see. And you can change the mode of the bend to unlimited. Um, I think it, yeah, I don't know. I just know it does something. <laughs> I don't know what exactly, but it does something. So you have that. Yeah, that's cool, but it's not that cool. Now you can add another deformer. Uh, twist is the most common one. Put that, uh, nope, put that beneath the bend, but not like, don't parent it, if you know what I mean. And you're going to definitely want to put this one on unlimited. Because if you don't, then it will be really stupid. Okay, so you can twist this however much you like in whatever direction you want to do. But yeah. So I'm just going to do that for now. When I do this tutorial, I'm not going to make it like exactly like this. I'm actually going to make it really non-complex because the Photoshop aspect takes kind of some time. So in order to just save time so you guys aren't watching like a 20-minute video. I'm just going to do a really simple thing. Okay, so that's just pretty much how you deform objects. Now you can copy and paste this using Control V, Control C. Yeah, pretty sure you guys all know how to copy and paste. And then you can change the values of this again. You pretty much just keep doing that until you get something of an effect that you like. Like, we're just, we're let's do that for uh, sake of time. I don't know why I'm like slurring my words. I'm not good. Even though I'm talking to no one, I'm still not good talking in front of people. So, excuse me for my slurred speech. I'm not, like, drunk or anything. Okay, so, um, once your null object is done, you can just drag in some cubes. <laughs> not cubes. These are spheres, Nate. Drag in some spheres, make it look better. I don't know. It's up to you, really. It's abstract. That's the beauty of it. It's not supposed to be pre-planned or anything. Okay, now for the materials, which makes it look really good. You're going to want to choose a color. Don't, I wouldn't do something so, like, don't just do red. Like, come on. Like, do an orange. Orange is an underused color, in my opinion. Oh. And, uh, check off luminance. Bring the brightness down to about 70. It doesn't really matter. I'm not too picky with my numbers. And then you're going to want to pick a similar color, like, Obviously, it's not exactly the same, but you don't want to pick, like, a blue if your color is orange. So, pick another orange, and then check off reflection. And under texture, you're going to want to pick Fresnel. Bring the brightness and the mix strength down, and there you go. Now you can drag that on, and voila, there's one thing. Now you can keep copying and pasting this material and just changing the color and the luminance to be roughly the same so you get a bunch of different materials that you can put on and yeah it looks pretty good if you it looks good if you repeat colors uh, so it's not just too wild but since I don't have that many shapes in this one I'm just gonna do all different colors oh, let's get some blue some uh, let's get some blues in there a nice dark blue because I like dark blue yeah, look at that. Oh, that didn't do anything. And then for the last two, I'll just do some white. 
And for the white, you can turn the luminance all the way up, just because you want the most pure white that you can get. And sometimes, if you don't put it all the way up, it doesn't look as good. And for black, I would think it would it wouldn't like it doesn't look like it's making a difference whether I turn the brightness up or down. So I guess don't worry about it. But yeah. And there's your shape. Like, obviously, it doesn't look very good now because that, that wasn't really a good shape. I just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of how to use the deformers to make it look abstract. So now you can import uh, lights. I'm not really going to go over that because that's not the point. But if you have Grayscale Gorilla, like it pack, you can kind of... Yeah, you, if you have it, you probably know enough about this program to use it. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. And I kind of want to render it out. And I'm not going to go over render settings, but one thing that is important, it's not major, but it just makes it a lot easier, is when you save it, save it as a PNG and click alpha channel. That way, it will make the, um, it will make the background of the image transparent, so it's a lot easier to work with in Photoshop, or a lot more easy, I don't know, whatever. And then also just make the output like your screen resolution. I usually do 1920 by 1080 to keep a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, as you'll see right there. Okay, so once that's all rendered out, if you use global illumination and ambient occlusion, it will take longer to do, but it looks better. So yeah, and now we're gonna go into Photoshop. I'm just gonna take a quick drink. Okay, so you're in Photoshop. Open up the image you just saved mind I'm gonna use the one that's on my desktop right now just for simplicity because I don't feel like waiting for the other one to render but yeah see as you can see the background is trans transparent so when I put something behind it like a gradient you can see the gradient behind it and I can shut this off and you still see the whole thing so that's kinda of the point so you can return turn off the gradient again and you can import a picture. It can be any picture. Um, like I mean sorry, a texture. Import any texture. I mean it could be any picture, but I'm just gonna get a texture really fast here. Sorry about this guys, I should have been more prepared. Texture. Ah, oh, I spelled texture wrong. Oh well. Okay, so I kind of like this papery. Oh, that's a really low res one. No, oh, that's stupid. This one looks nice. Okay, so nice paper texture. Copy this, and then you can paste in Photoshop. Wow, that is really small. Okay, looks like we're gonna be doing some scaling. So scale it up if you need to. It shouldn't look too bad when you, because you're gonna change the blending mode to overlay. You can, or uh, soft light. I think overlay looks better because it doesn't look as faded. But yeah, so you can put that on soft light. You can change the opacity. Yeah, that looks nice. Or overlay, sorry. And then you're going to right click and go to merge down. So now these are one layer. Now you're going to um, click the new layer button. And in that, you can draw a rectangle marquee right across the middle. You can use any any marquee you want as long as it's a selected area with these marching ants. And you're gonna click on the bottom layer, new file, or sorry, edit copy, re-click on the empty layer, layer two, and do edit paste. See now nothing really happens except for the marching ants go away. And that's just because all you're left with is that strip that you cut out. So now you click on the layer styles and then add a stroke. You can keep it any color you want, doesn't really matter. Do light, I'll just do a gray. The inner shadow, change the angle to 120. Just put the distance down to about two or three. And then bump up the size and the choke to make it look like it's like set in, as it does right now. I'll also put on a drop shadow. And you get up the, oh no, sorry, up the size. So yeah, it just looks better. Okay. Now you're going to create text. I'm just going to do diverse GFX because that's my YouTube channel name. You can type it like three or four times and then right click rasterize text layer. Rasterize, rasterize type, sorry. 
go to transform, rotate, and then, oh crap, and then you can rotate this however you want. It doesn't need to be anything special because you really can't really read this that much. Okay, so now once you have that, you can duplicate the layer and just keep going like this. You can move it so it doesn't look so even and just keep duplicating and merging down so you end up with one big text layer that covers the entire center bar. It doesn't need to cover the entire picture. It just needs to be able to cover the the center bar. Okay, almost done here. One more. Duplicate layer. Move it up here. Merge down. Merge down. Okay, once you have this, you gotta hold Alt on your keyboard and go between the text layer and the layer 2, which has the drop shadow and the inner shadow. And you're gonna see this little white and black circle that, like, they intersect. You're gonna click right there, and there you go. It masks the text into the shape that you created. Now you can set the blending mode of the text to overlay or soft light. I personally think anything looks fine unless it's like something stupid. But anything really looks fine. Um, I'll just do soft light for the purpose of this. And then you can turn back on your shape and it's almost done. And now for the edge smudging, you can choose any brush. Um, personally, I like these ones. They're actually preset brushes. They are um, the 17, the 23, and the 36, or the 23 to be specific. And you just turn up the size, and then click on your layer and just start to go to town smudging this bad Larry. Um, if you're going to do this like for your own background, I wouldn't rush so much. I'm just doing this for the sake of time. And like smudging shouldn't be so neat. Don't like make it perfect. But yeah, I think this looks fine. Okay, so now for the last part, just some text I put up here. I just wrote abstract, and I don't really like that font for that, so I'm going to change it. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, um, let's find B. Let's go to the B's. Babis. I like that font. Abstract. And now you can click on the magic wand tool. I feel like there's other easier ways to do this, but this is just how I do it. And you're going to highlight all of the text. Oh, you might need to click, like, control. Wait, what is it? Shift and add if, the, if it's not getting the entire thing. And then you can click on layer one. You can hide the text layer. So you just have the little marching ant things. Click edit, copy, and then go back up to the top, create a new layer, edit, paste. So. Again, nothing really happens until you add the layer styles like stroke, inner shadow, and drop shadow. And then you can kind of play with any settings you want to get this to look good. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. Diverse GFX. It's been fun. Yeah. Thanks.